Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thanks for checking out the channel. And if you haven't been here before, I make amateur radio related videos, things like how to's, reviews, and pretty much just showcasing the things I get my hands on. And today will be no different. A long, long time ago, in a land far away where people roamed the streets without masks over their faces, we as amateur radio operators went to these things called ham radio festivals. And this is one of the products I picked up. It's the Rig Runner 4008 which I want to talk about and discuss today. Hey, and before I get started in this episode, I just wanted to make a note. I just finished recording and I said cold solder joints quite a bit a few times. And upon further research, I think the answer is improperly wedded solder joints. Um, I am still learning as I'm showing you guys products and everything. So if you want to respectively let me know in the comments below, maybe some of the certain terminology I didn't have correct, that would that would be cool. Let's get started. So this is the Rig Runner 4008, and as you can see, it's branded West Mountain Radio. Maybe you can't see that because this camera is pretty bad. Look at that. Let's just wait for this to focus. Maybe someday it'll focus. So you might be wondering what this is. I've never seen anything like this before, Ham Radio Dude, and that's cool because I'm going to tell you. What this is is a power distribution panel for Anderson Power Pull adapters. And these Anderson power pole adapters are really convenient because they could rapidly connect and disconnect. If you don't have something like this in your ham shack, I would probably recommend considering purchasing something like this. And if you're new to amateur radio, you might be screaming at the TV. Well, tell us what it does. <laughs> Let me just show you what it does. So with this 4008 rig runner or this power distribution panel, you have one input of 40 amps and that's where your power source is going to be. In my case today, it's going to be a bio NO power battery, a 12 volt, nine amp hour battery. And all I'm going to do is just plug it into here. Now I will make a note too, in case you've never worked with power poles before, it's pretty simple, but red goes to red and black goes to black, right? Don't mess that up. And when you plug it in, you will see that you get a power light for a normal or a green light that says normal. Now I have up to eight different slots or power pole adapters that I can connect to. And as you can see, I have these removable fuses. I could put the 10 amp here. I could put the 10 amp here. I could put the 25 amp here. They're interchangeable, right? So let's go ahead and plug something into one of these. And the simplest way for me to do this is plug in one thing at a time and explain it. So the first thing I'm going to plug into the power distribution panel is going to be this little device here, which is going to allow me to see how much current is being drawn from the battery that's over here. So we're going to go battery to power into here, and then we're going to go out to a radio that requires up to 25 amps of draw. Uh, so again, we're going to start here, work our way down, red on red, black on black. It's plugged in. As you can see, it powers up and it says watt meter. Really hard to tell, but right now we're currently sitting at zero amps with the 13.24 volts. The battery is slightly depleted. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in that 25 amp radio that I was talking about. And it's up to 25 amps. It's not 25 amps as soon as you plug it in. So again, red on red, black on black. And I keep stressing that. Fortunately, these do have fuses in line, but you know, you don't want to possibly damage any of your components in case something were to fail. I'm still sitting at zero amps because I haven't turned the radio on. And as soon as I turn the radio on, you can see we bumped up to about 2.3, I think, amps, 2.29, 2.3. So that one's working. And then we're just going to kind of go up and down the line here. And 2.17 up to 2.3 and now this one should pop as you could see it just popped perfect now I'm going to go ahead I'm going to take this out and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the fuse on here before I just pull out the fuse though let me go ahead and unplug the power and then we're going to go ahead and just check this here and it should boy you can't even see that yeah, you can't even see through that to see if it actually affected this. I'll be right back. Hey, I'm back and I want to give you a demonstration real quick. So I was unable to gain superpowers and see through solid black fuses to determine whether or not they have uh, became an open circuit. So what I'm going to do here is I have this fuse, which you have two sides of the fuse and you could tell in the middle it's it's open. And then I have this multimeter I purchased from Walmart for pretty cheap. What I'm going to do is I have it set here and I'm just going to show you that. I put one end here and one end here. 
I show continuity. So that means that this fuse right here, this green one is good. Now you're going to notice if I do it with this one, no such luck. And that means that the fuse did his job. So I'm, I'm happy. Uh, in the meantime, I don't have another one of these fuses. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this fuse that's currently unmarked, but we'll figure that out here in just a few. I didn't want to leave you hanging. So I figured I would jump on here and let you know that that was a 30 amp fuse. Uh, again, I'm going to unplug this before I put the fuses in just for safe uh, practices, if you will. For this next part, I wanted to mention that I tested the continual load tester with the watt meter and the actual amperage that is shown is actually pretty close between the two. So that's kind of nice and reassuring. What I'm going to do is I still have the battery plugged in off screen here. As you can see, part of the power distribution panel and then I have a continual load tester. I'm just going to plug this into a 25 amp spot here. And now that I have it plugged into the 25 amp spot, you could actually hopefully see that it says 13.2 volts on here. Again, the battery is slightly depleted. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn these knobs on the continual load tester. And I am now drawing 6 amps. 7 amps, 8 amps, 11 amps, 13 amps. And we hit 185 watts on here, so it's shutting down. It doesn't like that. And because I didn't clarify it in the video, I just wanted to jump in here real quick and let you know that 185 shutdown that you saw is more of a feature of the continual load tester and not a design flaw of the Rig Runner 4008. Uh, but we're just going to plug it in again here and see if it can continually test whatever the limit is of this thing. I know 14.7 amps is currently what we're at. And we're at 175 watt hours, so we don't want to exceed like 80, 180. But here I am, I'm drawing 15 amps, and now I'm going to plug the radio in too to another 25 amp spot. And we should get a little bit more draw as well. So, you know, we're already at 18 amps of draw. I can continually put more and more load onto this thing. Quite simply, I just don't have anything else to put on this at the moment. Um, it is holding 15 amps. I'm not seeing any problems with the rig runner. Let's go ahead and open up the rig runner and take a look at what's inside. And while we're taking this apart, I wanted to let you know that the back is stamped proudly made in China. Now, the reason I figured I'd let you know that is some people do actually want to know where their stuff is made, but other people just want to come onto YouTube and let us know in the comments how everything that we're reviewing is garbage because it is made in China whilst they're posting those comments on their cell phones or laptops that were made in China. Today, I'm going to use my iFixit screwdriver kit to disassemble this Rig Runner 4008. I'm not sponsored, but I really do like this kit. And if I ever had the opportunity to be sponsored, I would definitely take them up upon it because it's a great kit. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to find these four screws on the side and we're going to unscrew them and disassemble this case. Okay, it took me just a moment here, but what happened was I got this side ready to go loose. I took the fuses out just because I thought they might be an obstruction. I couldn't get this side to pop open. And the secret was is to come under here and ever so lightly pry it up. And then it popped open. And I think I could just do that with this side as well here. So I'm going to come in and just kind of slightly pry it. But I wanted to show that to you in case you ever need to take this apart. Now you know. Anyway, we're going to take this off here and take a look inside. So this is the inside of a rig runner 4008. Now this is revision D as it says here on the bottom left of the screen. And really one of the reasons I wanted to open this up is when I purchased this and I got it for pretty cheap compared to, you know, finding them new for about a hundred bucks. I, I believe West Mountain Radio told me this was either a refurb or it was a, a factory second, something along those lines at the ham fest. And I, well, sure, I'm up for a deal anyway, and I'm sure it works, you know. West Mountain Radio has always been a pretty good company to deal with. A couple of things I want to point out, though, and I don't know if you could see it, but 
I'm not concerned about it either, but this one is straight. These are crooked. These are crooked, and then these are straight too. So I don't know. Maybe that's why it was a factory second. Um, maybe the, the craftsmanship just wasn't there. I'm not sure. Excuse me for the focus issue. Again, Canon makes a horrible camera. We'll just wait for it. There we go. Anyway, so you'll see that those are crooked, and that could have been the reason that this was a factory second, but everything else seems to work on this. You have a loudspeaker here, which I'm assuming is, is if you're over voltage, it'll start letting out some audible tones. So that is the inside. I just wanted to show you that inside here so you were aware of what it looked like. It's not just a bunch of power pole connectors that are Y spliced together. Okay, so real quick, I decided to unscrew these four screws, one, two, three, and four. So I can flip this over because there are companies who have been known to have some bad solder joints or some cold solder joints or some missing solder joints. And I was just kind of curious of what kind of workmanship we would get with uh, the rig runner, West Mountain Radio. I'm going to flip it over here and we're just going to take a look. And again, I apologize for the focus issue. So far, everything's looking good. And right here. I'm not necessarily completely sold on the fact that it's a horrible job, but it is missing a clump of solder in here too. So I think that needs to be resoldered, at least for uh, purposes of making sure that we have a connection all the time. Um, to the friends over there in the United Kingdom, I do apologize when I say solder, I don't mean it offensively. And I understand that that's offensive out there. I'm actually trying to say solder and it's just really difficult for me. So my apologies again, I don't mean any offense. I'm assuming that this needs to be soldered too. You see this right here, how there's solder here, but there's no solder here and there's solder here, but there's, so these should be together the same kind of circuit, but look at, there's no solder in there. What the heck, man? There's no solder in that one. I mean, there is solder in that one, but just missing some. These are just my observations. I'm not trying to put down a company or anything because I really do like West Mountain Radio, but uh, that's a little discouraging. I'm going to fix that real quick. Well, hopefully I'll fix it. So that's kind of a letdown that there's some problems with the solder joints, but I think that that might be the reason why this thing was on sale. Maybe somebody returned it because they were having a problem, but when it was being tested and it came back, Maybe they couldn't find a problem, so they said, hey, we'll just discount this severely. If there's a problem, then it's it's on them. I, I don't know the whole story, but I am just kind of really curious real quick. I'm going to hit this with a multimeter and see if there's any intermittent issues, which would help support my claim. Hey, I'm back, and here's what I'm going to do. I tried to solder the other end here, uh, the places that were missing you know, solder. But the problem is, is it's not adhering, even with flux. So I'm going to contact West Mountain Radio and ask them if there is something that I could use in order to get the solder to properly adhere to this board. As the board already works, and it, it technically is working or well enough for me at this moment, I'm going to go ahead and leave it so I don't damage anything further. But uh, I will reach out to them and hopefully get that fixed. Other than that, though, everything seems to be OK. And I do want to point out that there are other companies even made in the USA who have problems with solder joints. So we could sit here and we could talk all day about what country makes the best stuff or the worst stuff. And really, I'm just here to showcase a product. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and box everything up here and we'll be back in just a moment. I got this back together. And everything seems to be working now. I'm still very concerned about the fact that that's a cold solder joint. I'm going to reach out to West Mountain Radio. I'm sure they're going to contact me. They've always been nice people at all the ham fest. But additionally, here's what I'm going to do. I ordered a wind camp power distribution unit or looks just like the rig runner with Anderson power pull adapters and there's eight ports and it's half the cost of this thing. I'm going to get that and we're going to compare the difference in quality when I do get that. Maybe the wind camp is a better deal at $48 than this would be typically new at $100. Uh, additionally, I'm thinking about ordering an MFJ because everybody who hates certain products made in certain places. Let's go ahead and take a look at an MFJ and see if they're having any problems as well. 
A couple of things I will note on this thing is, yes, it did a good job of preventing you know, too much amperage going into uh, my device. It actually blew the fuse, which it's supposed to do. So great job. And these are these fuses are really nice and easy to remove and place back in, remove, place back in, really rapid to do it. So I don't really have any complaints except for those solder joints. And again, I'm not I'm not putting down a company or anything along those lines. I, I truly appreciate just getting my hands on tech and being able to disassemble it and check out what's inside and, and maybe learn a few things. So I'm looking forward to hearing back from West Mountain Radio and seeing what type of solder or what I could do to get the solder to adhere to the to the sections. But until then, this is the Rig Runner 4008. I'll let you decide.